Stewart is the most ethnically diverse high school in Fairfax County and probably in the state of Virginia. There's a real negative perception about Stewart in the community and with other schools. That's really not true. It's a very unique kind of combination that we have with kids from literally all over the world, all over the globe, working together. It's very challenging because we have all kinds of different uh, students, different ethnicities, different languages, different abilities. It's better than other schools because now they have block schedule, I could like do my homework in there and I make a lot of fun here. Students get to mix with, with people they might not normally be able to um, and I think that's a real benefit when you go out to the world later on. I've just felt very comfortable here at Stewart and I, I love the diversity. The students are so friendly. We have many uh, diverse cultures and languages, which uh, is a bit of a challenge, but uh, I think makes us stronger as a school. We all work together because our common interest is the students at Jeb Stewart High School. The population is very diverse. Um, not one day is the same. Every day is a different day. Um, I feel very needed here. I feel very appreciated here and I feel very comfortable both with the students and the staff here. As many good programs, such as like the IB program. There is certainly never a dull day. Um, the students have a lot to teach me, as I hope I have a lot to teach them. You get a, such a variety of insights from your students, and it's such a joy to, to come in every day and, and see what they're going to come up with from their different points of view, that um, it's never a dull moment. It's, it's a pretty respected school. I'm very proud to be the principal of Jeb Stewart High School. There's a history and a tradition associated with Jeb Stewart High School, which is located in the Bailey's Crossroads area of Fairfax County. The school began in 1959 and was built on grounds once used by Barnum & Bailey Circus. Today, it's a progressive learning institution for a variety of people from different lands with different interests and different abilities. We have students from over 60 countries who speak over 30 languages, and we are a microcosm of the global society in the world. It's a very exciting place to be. Stewart is unique because of the makeup of the student body. We have all kinds of programs to meet all kinds of needs of the students. The ESL program for entry level students as well as students who have some knowledge of English deals with a great number of ESL students that we have at school. Hopefully after a couple of years in the ESL program these students uh, transition into regular classes. We also offer the International Baccalaureate program for those students who are advanced and wish to have more global opportunities. One of the things we're also excited about this year is our tri-school network with Thomas Jefferson High School and West Springfield High School where students and staff have an opportunity to interact with each other and use resources from all three schools. We also are the Area 2 Center for the Mildly Retarded program. A lot of those students were able to mainstream into some elective programs as they mix very well with the entire student body. We have this year and um, in the past also had teams, ESL teachers working with mainstream content area teachers. This year we added LD teachers working with mainstream area teachers to try to integrate all of these students to do the best we possibly can to meet the needs of all the students. This year we're very excited about starting our block scheduling. We call our days red, white, and blue days. Our red and blue days are four period days. Students have more time to focus on the classes and an extra day to do their homework assignments. This is helping a lot of students really get into what they're trying to do in classroom. I see the, the students, and the school being the students who are in the school, the students better able to function in society because they can get along with people from every culture. And they have the human relations qualities that are necessary to go on and be a success in life. And today
At Stewart, the goal for everyone is to be a success, even those people just arriving here unable to speak much English. Last year, my students and I were talking about some of the problems that ESL students have. And we decided that one of the big problems is that when new students come in, they don't have a lot of information about the school and how it works in their native languages. So we decided to take on this video project to better meet the needs of those students when they first come into the school. We went ahead and we decided what areas of the school we thought were important and we thought needed focus. We came up with a list of things like the clinic, the cafeteria, um, the attendance office. And then the students divided themselves up into groups. They wrote scripts in English for each of those sections. And then once the English was edited, they then translated into their native languages of Spanish and Vietnamese. They typed that up. We ran it by the, the uh, appropriate people in the school to check for clarity and correctness and then we began to film. And the students did everything themselves. <laughs> what water borders the United States in the south? In the south. The Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico, very good. This is Concepts One Social Studies and it's for students who are non-native English speakers um, and they're at the beginning stages of learning English. The um, curriculum is based around geography, um, world geography, as well as local um, geography. The world geography and local and United States geography, um, we study the physical characteristics and right now we're learning the landforms across the United States. And it's very important to um, show these students something that's real. Um, pictures are very important because they are, um, they're just learning English. And um, to know what a mountain or a hill or a valley is really requires picture. And we try to, um, in every class period, integrate um, reading, some sort of reading, um, a hands-on experience a closing activity to um, try to assess what the student has gained in the class, period. One of the most demanding programs at Stewart is the International Baccalaureate. One of only two schools in Fairfax County to offer this option, IB is a rigorous program in the last two years of school. There's a considerable amount of research and writing in a core group of required classes and a variety of electives all taught from a global perspective. 12th grade IB topics in 20th century world history is the second year of a two-year course. The first year is history of the Americas, and that Americas is an important part. The students not only learn about American history, but also deal with a lot of Central and South American Caribbean history. Uh, this is the second part of the course, and in this point we con concentrate on the 20th century, and we deal with it on a world level. So they're expanding out again from the United States and looking at developments in Africa and Europe, Asia, and the Americas. And they have three topics that they need to explore in great depth. Uh, one of them is the cause and effect and practices of war. Another is the rise of the single party nation state. And we can look at a lot of good examples of that in the 20th century. And then the third one is wars of decolonization and how nationalism has changed the world in the 20th century. The United States was the greatest place to live in the world in 1900. Support or criticize this statement, okay? And that's what we're looking at. What kind of facts could you marshal up to support this statement or to knock it down? Uh, I, th I think this course is particularly effective because we're not just concentrating on the United States and anybody who walks into Stewart after a few minutes really gets the sense of variety in this school. We have students from all over Latin America, we have students from Europe and Africa and Asia and, and truly most, uh, most of the students here can appreciate studying a greater, uh, a greater variety of subjects rather than just the United States because a lot of the children have, have lived in these other countries or they've come from these other countries. And, and so it fits a school like Stuart, Stuart very well. Yeah, there's in, in the turn of the century, there was no voting for blacks in the South. There was no, Asians couldn't buy houses, and there was, it was, there was legal segregation. À la fin, Henri va lui dire combien de points vous avez gagné, combien de points vous avez gagné, 
Et ceux qui ont gagné le maximum de points, alors, c'est pour la télé ou contre la télé. These days, it's very important to know a, a language other than English, uh, especially in this uh, international area. Uh, they are working on the four language skills of speaking, reading, writing, and uh, listening. Uh, the goals of the class are to develop all of these skills. It's much more of a communicative type class. And today, we were having a, a mock kind of courtroom um, argument between two sides, one that, that's uh, for television and one that's against it. Um, yeah, and, and this all occurred in French. <laughs> uh, for each side, the students uh, chose a character to portray, um, which helped their argument. Uh, on, on, the, on the side against television, we had a, a teacher, uh, someone who's a babysitter, and, and also someone who portrayed a, a teenager who was against television. And on the pro side, uh, it, there were also some different characters which, which helped portray their views against television. And uh, we also had a judge which uh, moderated the arguments. Uh, I think the IB program at Stewart is a, a chance to, um, for, for a student to get the, their maximum amount of, of education and challenge in high school. Uh, it, it's very good to prepare for college and it also gives more of a, a world focus on, um, uh, on the studies, uh, w which can help later in life and in college, uh, especially if the student's planning to study abroad or, or do work in uh, foreign countries later on in life. We don't have the possibility to make the voyage, nor to gain the information, nor to enlarge their horizon. Just like a landscape? That would be good. Like, I mean, like, close up, mm -hmm. or from far up, and then come up close. That would be nice. Either way. Sounds good. The difference in the program is that there's a concentration on more cultural type things and since this school uh, has many students from many different lands, different countries, uh, there is a greater interest perhaps here uh, because a lot of students are coming from places in their country that they might go back into that country um, with the beginnings of art. I think the students are more serious. They work uh, into their artwork a little bit more. They are thinking more deeply, more critically about what they are doing. The title of this collage is the Rhythm of Life. Actually, um, the people are symbolized like dancing, but it's, it also symbolizes like joy of life, you know. And um, each person has like different types of paper. It symbolizes like different kinds of people. I think IB program is very nice program for the people who really wants to go to college and thinking about their major as art. Or oh, in my case, my major will be like architecture, engineering, and I think um, I'm pretty good at math and you know art. So I'm gonna combine those together, you know, for my major, which is architecture, engineering. Many of the IB students are members of the National Honor Society. One requirement of the IB program is to devote time to community service. What's one plus three plus one? That's correct. And then you just take that number. About four years ago, uh, Jeb Stewart High School's Honor Society and the Fairfax County Department of Family Services started tutoring a small group of students from Bailey's Elementary. We had about 15 students and about four tutors, and we met twice a week. Now we have about 50 students we have about 10 or 15 tutors and we meet three times a week. I help the students with their homework such as math, English, science, and usually they have worksheets so I can help them on those worksheets. I enjoy helping the students with their homework. It's, it's fun. The Tri-School Network allows computer users at Stewart the capability of accessing files and sharing in research with both West Springfield High School and Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. The main advantage of being connected with the other schools is the communication involved. The same programs could be available just within the school except for the internet capability and the fact that for uh, a much more economical uh, resources we can have access to more CD-ROMs and more research facilities that no one school would be able to uh, have the same amount of, of materials available. This group of kids right now 
are geometry students who are just finishing up a program that is introduction both to the program that they'll use a lot throughout the year and an introduction to geometry. So they're doing some work with points and lines and rays and also learning how to use their program and then as they finish up and go back there will be a, a different geometry class that's going to come in and do some practice with writing equations of lines. And then you want green gloves. Okay. Yes, it'll come. Just be patient. The whole idea is to write the equation that gets the most points at once. It looks like a game format, but it really there really is a lot of work involved in producing what they need through that game. Ladies and gentlemen, I just happen to have, Ms. Francis and I searched high and low, and we just happen to have found a poem for you. Oh, man. All right, yeah. All right. Oh, Mr. Lee. Can I hear an old boy? Can we get an old boy? We get an old boy, don't we? Stewart High School is a partner with George Mason University in their College of Education's Professional Development School. In addition to keeping the classroom supervising teacher sharp and innovative, this comprehensive approach for preparing new teachers maximizes the opportunity for the student teacher to develop his or her own skills. I think it's, it's great. Um, I've really had some um, great experiences with the students being actually feeling like I am a teacher instead of just coming in and observing and sitting at the back of the room and taking notes. This way I'm actually an active part of the process and um, I'm able to gain a relationship with the students and I'm able to learn teaching strategies um, and just as a whole just feel like a real teacher. This program is a non-traditional program. In a traditional student teaching situation, uh, had Debbie come from the other some other school, uh, school of education, uh, she would have arrived a month into the first quarter. Well, I have already met with my students on that first day. I've already set the tone for the whole year. She may go away thinking that all students are just automatically going to be the way my students were with her. Uh, if she isn't there on that first day, if she doesn't experience, if she doesn't participate in meeting and greeting the students and um, teaching rules as opposed to just kind of posting rules, um, doing all the things that the teachers do on that first day, it keeps her from getting set up when she has a, a group of students of her, of her own. Um, she's with me for 16 weeks. Normally speaking, eight weeks, 10 weeks, that's the normal experience for student teaching. It's not enough time. I appreciate the diversity here at Jeb Stewart. I believe that I'm getting the experience here um, with interacting with students from 30 different, I think there's 30 different languages here at Jeb Stewart. And I don't think that I would get this kind of interaction anyplace else in the experiences that I'm getting. I'm learning different teaching strategies myself just in how to um, communicate with the different cultures without offending them. Freshmen at Stewart not only get to take advantage of block scheduling during the week, but they also benefit from being grouped together for their classes, as they are in this earth science class. You will be making a time zone model of the world. To begin, measure the height of the can in centimeters. Caution. Don't cut yourself on any sharp edges. There shouldn't be any, though. Today we're doing a hands-on model of time zones. And they're learning how to, how to understand time zone change, because it's difficult to talk about how the day changes on the planet. You have to actually look at it on a model, I think, to understand how the time zones work. What we have at Stewart High School is we have something we call the family, which we also call the dream team. And what we do is we have the ninth graders, they all have the same four core teachers. So these students all have the same earth science teacher, they also have the same world studies teacher, they have the same math teacher, and the same English teacher. And the reason we do this is that it helps ease the transition from the middle school into the high school. And so that way we can keep track of them. It's easier for us to 
prevent kids from falling through the cracks and uh, we can meet regularly and we discuss the kids and it really helps us to really focus in on uh, individual differences that these children have. Working in the group is pretty fun. Um, we get to like help each other and just, I don't know, experience just how to do science and stuff. Typically students come in and take ninth grade earth science. Earth science gives them a good background and gives them a good starting point for the uh, future sciences that they'll take next year, like biology, the life sciences, and then going to chemistry and physics. So what we try to do in the ninth grade is to get them into the groove, so to speak, teach them how to keep a notebook, how to uh, do measurements, how to use the uh, instruments, the scientific tools, and just get them onto a good start in earth sciences. And we talk about, we learn about geology and astronomy, uh, oceanography, we learn about the weather, those sort of things. In order to meet the needs of all students at Stewart, some classes have been designed to accommodate those with special challenges. We study biology, which is the study of living things, but it's our job as teachers to modify our teaching strategies to be able to meet the needs of our students, allow them to master biology at the level they're at, and try to help them stretch and grow to the highest level possible. We started trying to find a way to integrate um, the special education students into the mainstream, uh, but to do it in an environment that made them feel comfortable and where they'd be successful. Some of these students would probably not be able to be mainstreamed for an academic class. Um, but by having the second teacher in there and someone who understands their individual learning styles, uh, most students do quite well. I soaked it in vinegar for 24 hours. Vinegar is a weak acid and it just bubbled and dissolved the shell away. So now what's the outside of a cell membrane? We had discussed yesterday uh, the process of diffusion and osmosis. Today we were doing a worksheet on that to review the concepts of uh, diffusion and osmosis. And then we set up a lab which would allow the students to see the process of diffusion and osmosis. They are observing cells, large single cells, and uh, hopefully it will help reinforce what the process of diffusion and osmosis are. The other egg, I'm going to put in pure water. So what do you think is going to happen to a cell? OK, Sophia is saying that if I put this egg in pure water, the water from outside is going to go into the egg. Anybody want to agree, disagree? No, agree. OK, when you are accommodating, you're doing what? You're letting the other person Make. have their way. Make it joke. All, right. All right, number five, understand the other person's point of view. WESEP is a program that is one of seven in the Professional Technical Studies Department. Um, it is designed to incorporate skills that are learned in the classroom with skills that are learned on the job. Um, we start off with how to get a job. We work into how to keep a job, um, banking, um, finance, taxes, insurance, um, and careers. Um, what you saw today was conflict, trying to ha help the kids to understand how to deal with conflict and different ways to approach conflict. I think it's very important um, as far as a lot of these kids need to have a job, um, some for um, to help family situations, um, others want, need the experience of having a job and I think it fits really well here at Stewart to have this type of program. Conflict resolution is not just a concern of the WESEP class at Stewart, it's a concern of both the administration and student body as a whole. Okay. The image that's presented to most of us uh, about the police is something we all feed from our, uh, our best source available, and that's the television. And sometimes, uh, uh, you know, that information is not necessarily accurate, uh, and sometimes it, it is. Uh, but for the most part, the police are presented in an enforcement role. Uh, when really, our primary function is to first protect life, second, to protect property, third, to keep the peace, and fourth, to investigate crime. And that's what this is really all about. It's not uh, enforcement primary, it's peace officer primary and relationship building. Okay, help me get them and, it's a, and it's a good chance uh, to work with some young people who are motivated and uh, 
are really going places. This is a pretty good school. You can submit these names to, I believe, any of the teachers or organizers, Mr. Gill. And I'm not sure what we're going to do from there. You can ask we started peer mediation to, uh, last year. Uh, peer mediation is growing throughout Fairfax County simply because it's one of the uh, ways and means that many people have found very effective to eliminate violence in, in the schools. And uh, here at Stewart, we didn't have a lot of violence, but certainly we have the potential to have violence. And it's another option for students uh, to resolve their problems. And what we're trying to do is teach them a life skill, uh, teach them a skill that would benefit them not only in school, but throughout their life, a way of resolving their problems without turning to violence. We help people solve problems by just mediating between them. We don't solve it for them, but we let them solve it. We just be the middle man to help them work out to, for their own resolution. And what was going on here, we were in our different committees, which is organization, um, recruiting, publicity, and training. And we just telling people their duties and what they have to do. I feel it should be peer mediation because if nobody helps people come to a resolution, then I don't think it'll ever end if they just continue to fight. Now, does anyone have any type of connection we can use? Um, I know a lot of restaurants are willing to give uh, gift certificates. I, did I mention there Whether participating in student government, taking part in extracurricular activities, or maximizing their effort in the classroom, Stewart students and staff are working hard to make this school the best. The SCA is the main governing body for the school and our main priority is to increase school spirit and we do a lot of activities. We do pep rallies and um, the homecoming festivities, a parade, halftime. All the school students in the school are a member of SGA and a lot of them participate in activities and help out and give suggestions. The other week we had a student leadership conference where um, students were really great and they gave us a lot of great suggestions for what to do about homecoming, how to make it better. Um, some of those were freshmen who had no idea what it was and it gave them insight to what it was and what would make them come, which is really what we want to do. I like Stewart. Uh, when I first came here as a freshman about three years ago, people were, oh my gosh, you're going to Stewart. I've always liked this school and I'm going to miss it when I'm gone. I think my philosophy is to try to meet the needs of all the students the best way we can to try to challenge the students to do the best they can. Uh, I think there are a lot of dedicated teachers here who will help students in any way possible. If the student wants to learn, they have an opportunity to learn. Cable Channel 25, the community classroom, offering instructional programming to the public. Programs on science, math, language arts, social studies, the fine arts. Programs for students and programs for parents, offered in various languages. It's your school at home, the community classroom, Channel 25, another service of Fairfax County Public Schools. Some people would like to see education go back in time. Or at least stand still. But in Fairfax County Public Schools, we're moving ahead, rapidly advancing to meet the growth, challenges, and opportunities of technological change, cultural diversity, and a global society. Where can you see these changes in action? Red Apple 21, the only cable channel dedicated to bringing you the best in learning and teaching in Fairfax County Public Schools.